Alright, hey everyone, Wanderbot here, and welcome to Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. It's uh, the latest game by Obsidian, and arguably the one I've been most excited for. Uh, obviously, uh, it's the sequel to Pillars of Eternity 1, the, uh, I guess, kind of the CRPG revival. Uh, that they kind of... They kind of went independent with that, and, you know, they're they're really trying to make their own games now as opposed to licensed products for other studios and, you know, KOTOR 2 and Fallout New Vegas, which is a shame because I actually loved both of those games, and I'd love to see them do more in that style, but at the same time, I really like the fact that they've been, uh, you know, striking out on their own and more or less really trying to become uh, what Black Isle should have become. Maybe, I don't know, I guess Bioware had uh, had some good moments too. But, uh, before we rant about that too much, I should probably say, you do not need to see Pillars of Eternity 1 before this. I certainly haven't finished that game, and I probably never will. Uh, but they do a short recap at the beginning of this, I checked that much. And honestly, I think the plots are only mildly connected. Like, I think you might see some NPCs from the previous game. Like, your consequences will have results in this one. But it won't be like this weird whiplash thing of like, who's this guy? Uh, which is good. And also, I'll probably finish this one, because the game's completely voice acted. Uh, which is really good for me, because it means I can actually just sit back and let dialogue happen for once, as opposed to having to read it out loud, which is usually what kills it for me on these series, because I enjoy adventuring around, I can do that, but the reading, it, it's tough. It's tough stuff. Anyway, new game. Alright, so we got five difficulties. Path of the Damned, largest amount of enemies at the player. It means more powerful, cannot be changed in game. Honestly, I think I'm going to probably play on Classic with level is level scaling on, and we're not going to do Trial of Iron or Expert Mode. Expert Mode is just the turn off tutorials, I think. But I can't turn it on. Anyway. Aora, a world where mortals live, die, and are reborn through the turning of the wheel. The cycle of reincarnation watched over by the gods, and made possible through pillars of a mystical substance known as Audra. Five years ago, you traveled from your home to the Deerwood, a nation that had waged war against the incarnated god of light, Aethys, resulting in his destruction. The country suffered from a plague of hollowborn, infants born without souls, that many believed was punishment for killing a god. In an ancient, secluded ruin, you witnessed a secret ritual that inadvertently transformed you into a Watcher, one who can see and speak with souls. The ritual also gave you horrible visions, waking nightmares of a past life that threatened your sanity. To put them to rest, you pursued the man who had led the ritual, a seemingly immortal agent of the gods, known as Theos Ix Arcanon. With divine assistance, you confronted and defeated Theos. Ending your visions and resolving the Hollowborn Crisis. In so doing, you also learned the great secret that Theos had protected. That the ancient Empire of Anguith had transformed themselves into gods. Your visions finally put to rest, you retired to the castle of Cadnua, built atop a massive statue of pure Audra where you ruled in relative peace and prosperity. Made a nice story. You fixing up that old keep? Lifting the curse? <laughs> Must have told it a hundred times. But 
something got to nod at me. Thinking the spirits there weren't really at rest. But maybe the gods weren't finished with us. So you wake to a sleepless world, the in-between of life and death. Follow your memories. You have been here before. Interesting. I, I put together a history for this game prior to this of what I might have picked if I had finished my, my original series on this. Which, like, I legitimately feel bad that I haven't finished uh, Pillars of Eternity 1 or You Tyranny. have seen past the Shroud. You are a Watcher now, and the Watcher you will stay. A Watcher sees souls, knows their pasts, and the souls see them back. A dubious honor. Inheriting a fortress both broken and cursed. What is a god? Hmm? A higher power? A rewarder of good deeds and punisher of the wicked? The gods aren't real, but something else entirely. Something created by people. And did you ever consider that these were things you were never meant to understand? That their comprehension is beyond you? Let the world see. Let them decide what to do. The wheel has turned again, Watcher. Come. This might be more connected than I thought it was. Well, whatever. I'll take it in stride. An aged dwarf shares this strange floating platform with you. His face is creased by so many wrinkles that his features lie buried amid shadowy pockets of skin. Still, the dwarf's well-practiced habits have left telltale tracks of a welcoming rictus across his visage. All right, so it looks like the frame rate is atrocious here. I think it's the curse of a rise, my Ryzen once again. I'll see if I can fix it after this cutscene. We'll see. You can see his smile coming before it blooms, reshaping the dwarf's face from a hanging sack of flesh into something resembling an oddly carved Mary Gore, replete with unhealthy bumps and discolored splotches. Okay, graphics. I should never have picked a Ryzen, honestly. Rid of some of these. One of these is probably going to fix the frame rate. That's how it always works. It's like some random thing. Turn off V-Sync, turn off miscellaneous. And if I can't fix it entirely, well, shit. No, I guess just turning it on low seems to have fixed the problem. It hasn't seemed to really have changed anything visually. I'm gonna walk around for a second. Alright, looks like we're good. Weird. 
Yeah, unfortunately I've got a Ryzen processor, and I've noticed that like a lot of games, especially uh, CRPGs, for whatever reason, because I had the same problem with Tower of Time, um, where, uh, where, like, just optimization goes out the window from my platform. Which sucks for me, because, like, this is an expensive computer. A lot of people are like, yeah, get a Ryzen, it's like cutting edge. I didn't take it into account that developers don't think it exists. Anywho, yeah, it doesn't look visually different, so we'll just keep going. It's probably some special effects here and there, but, I mean, everything looks good. And that's what counts for me. Hello, what the heck sit. are you? Please. Can I? Can I sit? Oh, we have a sit button. Thank you for joining us, Watcher of Cad Nua. The Gaunt Woman seated at the table is clad in time-worn black armor that seems too massive for her to move in. A pale, slender neck rises from the gorget, topped by a hollow face. The milky skin stretched across it is delicate and translucent, like parchment that has been scraped clean too many times. She is preoccupied with the arrangement of cards on the table between you. With each movement, her armor squeaks and groans as though bearing an incredible weight. She places a final card, gives a nod of satisfaction, and raises her eyes to meet yours. Your brush with the Divine has drained you of your powers, fractured your memories. Look upon these cards. They represent the courses of your life. You alone know best how they flowed. Arrange them to fit what you remember. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. So these are these are histories. Uh I Okay, so we have a bunch of different ones. We can even import a path, path of uh path of exile. Pillars of Eternity 1 save. Uh mine is incomplete. That would be bad. So I can do benevolent soul. Uh, return the Hollowborn souls to Deerwood's children. Pledge to Hylia, you're kind and merciful to the people you encountered. Fair and balanced. Uh, let's see, Barath. Yeah, so we have a bunch of different ones. Huh. Interesting. So I guess pledging the bidding of every god is not actually uh, a good idea. I I would I would have loved to actually play through the previous one in preparation for this. I just am, am really busy all the time. So usually I go benevolent soul. I did estimated history. The only difference is uh between benevolent soul from what I can tell and the one that I put together is uh I pledge to do the bidding of every god and I'm not entirely sure how if that's going to bite me in the ass. But I think I'm gonna. I'm. I think I'm just going to bite myself in the ass, and we'll go from there. I mean, yeah, I'm not that flexible, but whatever. Uh, it's time time for some butt biting. At least this way, I kind of vaguely know what what happened, as opposed to anything else. I really don't know what happened, but we'll Does go. Does everything with it. appear to be in order? Sure. Good. Welcome to the beyond. I am Bera. One half, anyway. She points a finger in the direction of the dwarf who led you here. Though the movement is slight, her gauntlet squeaks like a rusty hinge. The dwarf's rictus returns as he nods in the woman's direction. Tell me, do you remember when we last met? Interesting, so I can choose choose my paths here. This is this is gonna be rough. I really was hoping this would be a little bit more standalone, uh, because it would make my life easier on this one. Okay. Well, whatever. I mean, luckily it more or less recaps it as part of the options. And if it is a serious problem, what I can always do is just pause and go look it up. Uh, if it's a character that I need to care, care about. So, we might as well look up who Barath is. I think this will get smoother as we go along. But so, Barath is the god of cycles, doors, life, and death itself. Okay, let's work from that. So, I spoke to the other gods in the Hall of Stars and pledged myself to them. You did. She places a card on the table, 
showing a tall tower with the gods' constellations arrayed around it in the sky. It seems you had trouble with your memory then, too, as you decided to make a similar vow to me. The wheel turns for all mortals, Watcher. You had to know that sooner or later your turn would come. She slaps a card down, a broken bell in a tower. The crack of the card on the table ripples through your soul like a shockwave, leaving you momentarily disoriented. Her fingertips slowly drag away from the card, faintly creaking as they retreat across the table. There will be time to deal with that later. Her black eyes stare through you, unblinking for a long, uncomfortable moment. You had need of the gods once before. Now it seems we have need of you. The being that occupied Odnua's statue beneath your castle was the dead god, Aeothus. Of this, we are certain. What we do not know is what his intentions are. Okay, so, nice thing about uh, Obsidian is they, they do these like little lore bits, so you can um, you can pull them up if there's a term you're not familiar with, which I'm, I really appreciate. Uh, makes it a lot easier for me. So, Odnua. Uh, Odnua was a powerful Anguithian tyrant. He went mad after the death of his son, Maros, because he knew there were no gods to ensure he would be properly reincarnated. He dedicated his life to carving a massive statue of his son out of living Adra with the intention of drawing Maros' soul out of the beyond by force. Odnua was defeated through the efforts of other Anguithian ty tyrants who buried him with his work. In later centuries, colonists built a castle over the runes and named it Cade Nua. Like the runes themselves, Cade Nua was considered cursed. So, uh, in the previous game, you more or less inherited a castle. It was on top of this, like, giant dungeon. And Aethos. God of rebirth, redemption, dawn, spring, and light. Traditionally shown as a man bearing a candle and wearing a silver crown, believed to have possessed the body of the Red Saren farmer Wadewin during the Saints' War and been destroyed during, along with Wadewin at the end of the war. He recently reformed his essence in the statue of Maros Nua, beneath Cade Nua. In the process of pulling himself from the endless paths, he destroyed the castle and left the Watcher of Cade Nua at the brink of death. Though Aethys stole a large fragment of your soul, you were strong enough to survive the onslaught and enter the In-Between. The In-Between. The in-between refers to the shadow world that souls briefly wander after death on the way to the beyond. It has been described as a hazy landscape, empty, but for the glow of other souls, Audra, and Watchers. This is the space that the Watchers peer into when they observe and speak to lost souls, and soul fragments. Even the gods cannot reach it. You and he are still connected. He has chosen a body made of living Audra, perfused with the power of thousands of souls, including yours. It should be little difficulty for an experienced Watcher to find him. Am I dead? No. But neither is your body truly alive. Your lungs draw breath, your heart pumps blood, but your flesh is as soulless as a hollowborn. That is, until I return you. Hollowborn, an infant born without a soul. She delicately places a card upright on the table. The art depicts souls flowing out of a pillar of Audra. Well, I'd like to find him as much as you would. He destroyed my castle and, dis and killed who knows how many people around it. I know. It is my business to know. 322 in Cadnua and your surrounding lands. Their souls remain in Aetha still. You have the power to save them. Serve me, and I will return you to your body. Or don't, and return to the wheel. <laughs> I'm really curious. Can I Can I save? I don't think I can quick save here. It'd be hilarious to pick option number two. Because I think this would end it right here. Hmm. It's real tempting. You know what? I'll come back. I'll come back later. I probably should have saved. Um... I'll, I might come back later if people want me to. And we can see what happens when I take the wheel. Do it. Well, it would be pretty quick to skip through everything. Uh, I'll take the wheel! This will prove much more difficult without someone of your unique talents and circumstances. She raises her gauntleted hand 
and gestures to the dwarf hovering at the periphery. The dwarf nods, the supernaturally wide smile returning to his face. He gestures for you to follow him. Sure. No sooner has Barith spoken than you feel yourself dissolve. It is not an unpleasant sensation, something between falling asleep and drifting on a warm current. Your essence is pulled through the Adra, where it mingles with the stuff of thousands of other souls. Your thoughts, your memories, even your identity as the Watcher fade like a dream. Eventually, your soul reforms and finds its way into a small, crawling thing of fur and claws. You know the world by sound and scent, as food and danger. The concerns of gods and nations are beyond you. It is a simple and satisfactory existence, though your mind can conceive of no other. Whether it is a long one will depend upon the Watcher Barith chooses in your stead. <laughs> That's more of an epilogue I, uh, than I thought I was going to get there, to be totally honest. Is it going to roll credits on me? <laughs> well, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, whew, that was a short series, but that was a good one. Satisfying. First Obsidian game I think I have ever beaten. Yeah, because I... Well, at least on camera. I think I started recording a little bit of... Um, KOTOR 2 for a Patreon series, but I never finished that one. Haven't finished uh, New Vegas, haven't finished Tyranny, haven't finished the previous game. And, uh, well, finally, finally I've beaten uh, Pillars of Eternity 2. Sweet. Bit short, though, but, I mean, the, the voice acting was good. The art was good too, the music was good, frame rate was a bit of a problem. You really think they could have optimized for that for that ending? Like for we how long? Twenty-two minutes, plus you know me rambling in the beginning. Let's say about that was a fifteen minute long game, a bit short for a CRPG. You really think the, the frame rate would have been an even sixty the entire way through? Oh well. I mean, what can I say? I'm not a game developer. Let's speed this up. I'm afraid the credits might end up being faster, uh, longer than the game itself. Which, I mean, that would, that just, that'd be weird. That's a lot of Kickstarter backers. Oof. Okay, so this time, I wanted to check something. Do we have a quick save? F5. Does it work here? Can I, no, I cannot save the game. So I, I couldn't have saved Sit. before this anyway. Please. Well, that's unfortunate. Hello, I'm a naked purple ghost. Thank you for joining. A pale, she's pre your brush. Okay, so let's do estimated Does history again. Does appear to be in order? And if I say no, that's not what happened. Okay, so she doesn't give us any individual choices. Does everything appear good? The dwarfs tell me. Okay. Do you remember when we last met? Okay, so last time I picked, I spoke with other gods in the Hall of Stars and pledged myself to them. I think I'm just going to go with two. Uh, I think so. I pledged myself to do your bidding in exchange for your aid. Your memory must have faltered in Sun and Shadow as well. Because you did not deign to keep that pledge. She slaps a card down. A broken... There will be time okay. you had need so of the gods. So it's the same thing. The bee, though Aeon, you and he are still... No. She so... delicately places a card upright on... I know. Their souls remain in Aethus still. You have the power to save them. Serve me and I will return you to your body. Or don't, and return to the wheel. Okay, uh, so instead of taking the wheel, we could take the wheel again, see if anything changes, but that that's unlikely. Then let's get on with it. Good. Before you return to Aora as my herald, you must remember who you were, the last whisper of life in death. For a moment, the sockets of her eyes darken, leaving the pits of a death's head gazing out at you. When you can picture your own face, the beyond will lead you back to your own kind, to the world of mortals. Alright, uh, let's see, so this is just going to be uh, some super quick character customization. If you guys want me to, I can actually uh, put up what this was. Uh, you know, full commentary and whatever, you know, me making my decisions. 
Uh, but I spent about 14 minutes trying to make my character in this game, so we're just going to do the hyper-condensed version. Uh, but, uh, if it's not obvious by my, like, speech about this game before, and if you haven't seen my Divinity Original Sin playthrough, I am really, I'm like a huge fan of, like, evoker-type characters. You know, spellcasters in, uh in CRPGs now, as a result of playing the Red Pin Red Prince in Divinity Original Sin 2. So that's what I'm going to be building this time around. I was kind of torn between being like a, a multi-class uh, multi or not, as well as like an evoker, but I eventually just decided, no, nope, screw it, we're going to be a fire-based godlike wizard. Just pure wizard so I can try everything. Maybe if they make Pillars of Eternity 3? All specialized into pure evocation or something, just because it seems to be what I'm focused on. Um, I'd love for them to go deeper into the subclasses and stuff like that. Because currently it just feels a bit shallow. It's like, oh, you just don't get access to certain spell schools. Oh. Oh, well. It's not the end of the world. Anywho, uh, let's just speed ahead. More or less, those are my decisions. And apart from, uh, I guess, being a, uh, a dwarven fire godlike... I've pretty much described everything. Oh, right, stats. I just min-maxed into power and intelligence. Or, sorry, might. Might and intelligence, so... Uh, heavy damage and big AoEs. Should, should work out, I hope. I hope. Go forth now, Watcher, as my herald. Know that I do not give you this title lightly. When the time comes, you will have the power to reveal the souls that cling to you. To open the gateway from the in-between to the waking world. Find Aethys. Learn his plans. When I have cause to talk to you, I will summon you. With a quick gesture of her hand, you feel a sharp pain in what would be your chest. The pain continues, intruding deeper into your soul. Looking down, you see a small, lump of darkness roiling within you. The darkness lingers there, but the pain abates and fades entirely within the span of a few seconds. A chime. Do not fear, Harold. It will not harm you unless you choose to cross me... again. The pits of her eyes darken briefly, flashing a death's head your way. The translucent mask quickly returns, and her gauntleted hand gestures to the dwarf hovering nearby. The dwarf nods, contorts his face with his odd smile, and gestures to a new door. I'm so short. Ooh, I can zoom out a bunch. Can I sprint? There's no such thing as sprinting. You can, like, find the, uh... You can find the path, because it's the only thing passable around here. There we go. Very slowly. Admittedly, I'm not entirely sure how the Red Prince would feel about being a fire dwarf in this one. I guess fire. As long as everything's good there. Oh, hey, it's my body. We're on a boat. I'm on a boat! Yar! Guess I'm going to speak, uh, uh, Paradically for the rest of this series. Arr. Goosebumps rise on Eater's arms at your approach, but he seems unaware of your presence. Whoop! I should be burning this bed right now. The return to your body feels like waking after a fitful drunken sleep. The rocking of the ship sends pain jolting through your limbs. Crashing waves hammer inside your skull. Adair watches over your body with a glazed look, taking long, even tokes from his pipe. At the first movement of your chest, he starts. His gasp, mid-puff, sends him coughing and straining for breath. No, there's no way. You're awake. What are you doing awake? How are you feeling? 
Okay, so Adair is like one of the first companions to get in the previous game, and he's kind of like the tank bruiser type character. Let's just commit to who are you, because most of you guys haven't seen this game, and to be quite quite honest, let's just role play as an amnesiac, because otherwise this is going to be a pain in the butt. Me? You don't remember? Adair points at his face, which he seems to be arranging into his most recognizable expression. Receiving no response, he shrugs. I'm the captain of this boat, and I was real big back in Deerwood. Had this keep called Cadnua. I was famous. And I was what you'd call a watcher. I'd go around talking to dead folks and creeping out just about everyone who saw. He holds up his hands with fingers curled to mimic claws. I don't regret this option. <laughs> you, you're just some farmer. Likes to follow me around. Take most of the beating for me when we get attacked. Don't worry, it'll all come back. <laughs> I could just go with it. <laughs> oh, should we do it? Should we just commit to it? I I really like the idea of of seeing how much I can flip uh, flip this around. Sure. <laughs> oh man. I mean, three is the optimal one, but committing to be the Adair's like butt monkey is really funny. Um. Oh, jeez. This is why I wish I could, like, quick save in the middle of dialogue to see what would happen. Uh, I'm going to commit to it, if, at least for a little while. It'd be hilarious if it changes the plot. Probably not. Well, if it doesn't, I still wouldn't mind you taking the hits for me when the fighting starts. Anyway, you didn't answer my question. How are you feeling? Alive. Alive's a big improvement. I hate to cast a pall over your recovery, but I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. The voice echoes from inside the bust. The remains of the steward of Cad Nua. Cad Nua has been destroyed. Aethus possessed the statue of Maros Nua and rose from the ground, consuming the souls of all nearby. It is only by the exceptional strength of your soul that you survived. And even then, just barely. The further Aethus withdrew, the weaker you became. We chartered this ship and followed him to the Deadfire Archipelago. I know not how, but it seems he has retained a piece of your soul. And proximity to it has brought you back. I know. How could you know all that? You've been faking on us. He pokes at your shoulder with one finger. Misfortune's brewing topside with... Migrants fires the captain's stirs. An older man with ale sour breath rubs his bloodshot eyes and stares at you. So, Magrin, goddess of war, fire and trans transformation, purification, consumption, and trials, patron goddess of the Deerwood. Thought to have blessed the god hammer bomb that destroyed Wadewin and possibly Aethys. Engrim, the smell of drink on your breath could wake the very dead. Now, what's this about? Pirates. They're demanding parley with you, Captain. I know this is asking a lot, but you better arm yourself and get on deck. Should be some gear in there. He indicates a nearby wardrobe. Okay. Time to get my stuff on. All right. Did it all? Now make some use of it. Okay. Medium armor, or male armor. Interesting. Does it... Can I just, uh, I don't want to right-click for details. Is there, like, an auto... Nope. There's no auto equip. That's unfortunate. I was really hoping I could drag it over. Weapon. Shield. Oh. I guess the rod is two handed. Good to know. Hylia's bounty. Ship crew morale plus 10. Plus 10 all defenses, skills, max health. Interesting. Can I. Oh, that's food. I gotcha. Well, I guess I'm just committed the to this of for now. Deadfire are notorious. I suggest you deal with them quickly. Let's talk to Adair for a second. Get armed and suited up. We gotta get oh, on deck. I guess that's the extent of it.
Well, what have we here? A little sloop? Lost and alone in the storm? Interesting. Not voice acted. Also interesting. The frame rate out here is bots. A surly British looking captain stands stiff back before his crew. He scowls as he assesses you, his hair whipping about his ears in the wind. I'll be taking your ship now, if you don't mind. And especially if you do. Well, at least he asked. I am a gentleman of fortune. The captain shrugs in the sheeting rain before pinning you with a slow mur murderous grin. Give her up easy, and I'll see you get a swift death. It'll be bloody and agonizing, sure. But at least it'd be quick. As if I'd ever surrender to a common pirate. Who says I'm common? You've got the honor of being plundered by the full fires ranking pirate in the Principe. Listen up, mates. He cracks his neck as he addresses his crew. I'm off to spear me a bigger fish. One with sharper teeth like. I'm trusting you lot not to cock this up. Don't damage the sloop when you take it. Play with the crew if you'd like, but don't bring me any prisoners. None that are alive. You heard, Fenwick! Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can quickly mess with some of this. What do we have? Font scale, frame rate max. Turn off occlusion opacity. Can't change any of that. We could try cranking down the resolution for a bit. Let's try both of those. I'd rather have... Durham. Yeah, nope, doesn't look like I, uh, doing any of that changes anything. Either bad optimization or this is my usual problem of my Ryzen is working against me. Maybe I should actually dig out my old computer and uh, see if it works works better for this. Because unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, pretty much no matter how powerful my hardware is, I can't do anything about the frame rate. Yeah, I've got a really beefy computer. I got a 1080 Ti. I've got uh, the problem is I've got a Ryzen, and my usual assumption is either this game has performance options for everybody. Or, uh, the yeah, other streamers aren't having problems. Yeah, I've got a Ryzen processor, and um, what that means is really hefty optimization issues for uh, for like new games, especially for from like smaller. I'd say double A studios. It's usually never a problem with indie games, but double A studio games tend to give me the most amount of trouble, and the game just runs really poorly. So I can't play, like, Total War. I tried playing the Council. Didn't work so much. Um, I don't know. I'll see if I can get it working. I mean, luckily, it seems like it's probably the water. Anyway. Let's get going. Never mind. It's all black. Okay, here we are. It's pause. So we're in combat. Let's take a look at some things. So I've got Visage of Death's Herald. Use your watcher powers to gaze through your target's eyes, deep into their soul, temporarily frightening, frightening them. So we've got minor missiles, fan of flames, arcane assault. Which one's got the biggest AoE? Well, that'll hit all of them, if I can cast it in time. Okay, that worked. How many spells do I have? Do I have every spell? on this list that I can, Defend like, does ship! this just work like, uh, Tyranny? Because if that's the case... Oh, I see. We have a recovery period between spell casts. I'm gonna back off a bit. Okay, what else do we have? I guess, honestly, I'll just attack. Luckily, this is also a CRPG and not, like, a spectacle fighter. If this is a spectacle fighter, it'd be a lot more noticeable. Storm's picking up! Take cover! Okay, you defeated the pirates, but you're not out of trouble yet. The storm picks up, lashing your ship and driving you dangerously close to a rocky shore. The Defiance crew hurries to reduce sail and batten down the hatches. They work quickly, but the ship is still listing heavily. Just then, a loose crate tumbles towards you, gathering speed on the rain-slick deck. It misses you, but knocks Chipitek, one of your deckhands, off his feet. 
The Defiant. I should probably read this. The Defiant is the ship purchased with the last of Cade Nua's riches. It has borne you from the Eastern Reach to the Deadfire Archipelago. Okay, so the Defiant heaves. Chitpu, uh, Chitupak pitches over the side. He grabs onto the rail, but his fingertips are sling uh, his fingers are slipping. He cries out for help. Meanwhile, the runaway crate totters at the edge of the deck, ready to plunge overboard. You recognize the symbol on the front, and you realize it's likely it likely contains the salvage from Cade Nua, your key. Res rescue Chitapek. You grab Chitapek's arm just as his grip fails. For a tense moment, he hangs suspended over the roiling sea. Then, with a mighty tug, you pull him back onto the deck. You hear a heavy splash. The crate from Cade Nua is gone. Chitapek, meanwhile, nods in gratitude and hurries to his station. Meanwhile, the storm has nearly driven you ashore. A flash of lightning reveals a treacherous coastline, and Aethys striding into the distance. The lookout barely has time to shed a warning before the Defiant runs aground. The impact hurls you from the deck and into a froth of waves, bodies, and splintering debris. You struggle towards the beach just ahead, even as the surf tugs you toward the open sea. You kick and paddle with all your might until at last you feel the sand between your fingers. Pulling yourself ashore, you collapse. The other thing that uh, I might have been running into as far as frame rate goes is that was the tutorial fight area, and it might not have optimized it as much. Who knows? Yeah, because my frame rate is fine here. Uh, you've been getting a lot of sleep so far on this trip. I'd awoke you, but you look so peaceful with your face in the sand. Adair runs his fingers through his hair and removes a strand of seaweed he finds lodged there. He examines it closely, and then tosses it onto the sand. If you're worried about the ship, you can stop worrying. It's wrecked right over there. He points out the Defiant, despite it being difficult to miss from your vantage point. So far, it's just you and me, and the chair lady over there. Dare nods towards something further up the beach. It's a relief to see you awake, my lord. I worried you were in for another long sleep. Your steward appears to be lodged between some rocks. Despite this, her tone is warmly cheerful. I hate boats. Shh. It's right behind you. Unfortunately, I believe we'll be needing the Defiant yet. Unless you mean to settle down on the island for good. Oh, there's a thought. Interesting. So if I've been a uh, priest of Bareth, we get some extra options here. Oh, well, uh, let's see. Can we patch, patch up the ship? I'm afraid I won't be much assistance in that regard. And not to doubt Master Adair's capacity, but even he would need supplies. That's true. Steak, especially. Patching the hull is only the start. You're going to need help getting the Defiant out to sea again. And a crew, for that matter. Let's see about the other survivors. And somehow we gotta get the ship repaired. I don't want to be paddling out of here on a salvage raft. For now, I'd say your best bet is to find some sign of civilization. If nothing else, we may be able to hire on a shipwright. My lord, if it is not too taxing, could you explain how it came to pass that you were returned to us? Squint dramatically while looking out at the ocean. I've returned as the Herald of Bareth. I'm on a special mission to find Euthys and learn what his plans are. Sure. I suppose if any mission could be considered special, it'd have to be this one. A perilous endeavor indeed. Castle or no castle, you are still my lord, and I will aid you to the best of my ability. Well, I suppose we'd better get a move on. Yay. Okay, so we can choose what... Uh, Adair is. Fighter, rogue, swashbuckler. We will need a rogue. Uh, ultimately... We're, he's going to be a tank, so we're going to need a healer and a thief after him. And then we'll have a, a nice, even party, at least for a while. So I'm going to go fighter with him. All right, so that's going to be it for the uh, the first episode for me. Uh, I'm just going to wander around and grab stuff on the beach. You'll see this on the next episode. Anywho, uh, let's see. So I really like this game. I like it better than all their past games, and it really is the voice acting. I'm sure it costs them a pretty penny, but it makes it so much easier for me. Because I can just sit back and let dialogue happen. And, you know, of course, respond when it's my turn. 
Uh, but just in general, I, I really appreciate having full voice acting to work with. Um, but I guess I'm going to have to cut the footage here now that I'm thinking about it. Because they we almost immediately go into uh, dialogue time. Anywho, uh, let's see. So, yeah, I really, I really adore this game. I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I can't wait to play more. Uh, the frame rate, I should probably bring that up. Uh, I fixed it. It took a little while. I had to get to the first town, and then it, like, really, really hit some snags. And as long as we're not near water, I am okay. Unfortunately, this game's on boats, but at least the first four hours aren't on water. So if we're lucky, uh, that means that uh, they'll have they'll either have it fixed, or we just won't have to deal with it very often. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, Hopefully, they'll have a fix out fairly, fairly soon. And, well, if not, like I said, most of this game probably is played on dry land, even with the boat aspects. It, it's not a problem on the overworld. It, it really is when we're just standing around on boats. It's some kind of water shader texture thing. I don't know. Anyway, so I guess with that out of the way, uh, if you guys like this episode in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like, helps more than you know. And if you want to see more, I'm gunning for a full series. I love CRPGs, and I'd love to finish more of them. Still got Tower of Time to finish as well, uh, but I'm going to probably focus on this one a little bit more just because of, uh, well, I don't know. It's, uh, I like the combat. The exploration in Tower of Time is good too. If you're looking for other CRPGs to try out, uh, I'd highly recommend that one. And Divinity Original Sin 2 and 1. And obviously the past Obsidian games, Tyranny and Pillars of Eternity 1, especially the first one. It, it's clear that playing the first one would help. Uh, there's a lot of background that you miss by not playing it, but it's not necessary. Uh, which is good. Anyway, so, like I was saying, if you guys like this in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like, helps more than you know, and if you want to see more, hit subscribe. Uh, because I'm going to be playing a lot of this game. And with that, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.